Bob right here. I hope I'm coming live. It looks like I'm coming live. Um, hopefully some people could join. I did not want to do this later tonight because I definitely did not want to interfere with Jesse's call. He does a call uh, on Tuesdays, which is absolutely phenomenal. And that will be, I believe, at 7 p.m. Central. That's 8 o'clock Eastern. And uh, he streams it into our ER Shred group. And um, please join us tonight. I wanted to jump on here real quick because there's a lot of people having probably the number one hot topic as it relates to red meat is, oh my God, is that okay? What about your cholesterol? And there's a lot of comments being made about cholesterol. And I wanted to come on and at least share what we can say and what we can't say and what does it mean. Um, first of all, thank you ER Shred Nation because for this protocol, I changed my life and I had to have a leap of faith. I had to jump in. So like many of you, I mean, I don't know all your stories, but I too was concerned about cholesterol. So I entitled this, Red Meat, Butter, Cholesterol, Oh My. Well, in my family, having high cholesterol is a badge of honor. We all have high cholesterol. It's always been the case. Now here's what's kind of cool. I realize that in my lifetime, technology is catching up so that we can actually analyze it. Now they look at good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. They look at the fluffy kind versus the hard particle kind. They look at um, your scoring ratios. And you now have the ability to do what's referred to as a CT scan for calcium, for your calcium score, in terms of what do your arteries look like. So when I started this, I was terrified because when Sean called me up and said, dude, we're gonna do this and this is how I did it. I did it with red meat. I'm like, are you kidding me? I don't know how that's gonna fly. I mean, honestly, I mean, everything you read in the media is anti-meat. I mean, everybody's anti-meat. I mean, I love a steak, but I'll have to be honest with you. I've been listening to um, propaganda that I look at it now, <laughs> in my opinion, as saying don't eat red meat but more than a couple times a month so man i cut back on burgers i cut back on the steak that i love i cut back on everything and i was eating lean meats and fish and veggies lots of veggies in fact so much that i have shared my story um several years back i got myself into what's referred to as metabolic syndrome meaning metabolic inflexibility it didn't matter if i went low carb high carb high fat high protein whatever you name it my body stuck. It literally went kaput. I wasn't gaining a pound. I wasn't losing a pound. I was stuck. So what did I do? I went vegan because my doctor told me to. I did that for about 60 days, 70 days, and I felt good initially, but then I felt awful. Did I lose all the weight? No, I went from the 220, 225 range, got down to 215. So I did lose basically 10 pounds in two months, still incubating my shakes, still doing the cleanse, still doing the isogenics that I've been doing for 17 years. Now, what did I go back to? I adopted back into my old habits. I introduced fish and chicken and lean meats. Was I eating steaks? Nope. Told I couldn't eat red meat. So let's fast forward to last fall and Sean tells me he's eating nothing but red meat, grass-fed meat and butter and lots of it. And look what it did for me. I'm like, oh my God. That's crazy. Look what it did for Crystal. Oh my God, that's crazy. Buddy, we're doing one October 1st. You gotta join me. I'm like, uh, I don't know, I can't do it. I, we, we, and I used an excuse. We had a team shred the conventional way starting October 1st. And I said, let me do some research. And he said, listen, I'm gonna send you a documentary. I want you to watch it right now. It was about an hour, hour and a half long. But in that documentary, it referred three books. The doctor re referenced three books. Those three books, I wrote down the titles and I w jumped on Amazon and I bought them and I read all three books. That's nuts, right? But why did I do that? I had to figure out what was going on with Sean, why it would be okay, but I was finding a logical reason for my brain that gave me enough evidence or confidence to say, okay, let's do it. Here's the reality. Um, the first group went through, had amazing results. We jumped on the call. It was a tearjerker with the, with the testimonials. I couldn't believe it. So what did I do? Did I take that? Nope. I ended up reaching out timidly, texting Randy and Tony Escobar and saying, would you be kind enough to call me or let me know 
what your real thoughts are on this. Like they were going to have a different story if they talked to me personally. Well, of course they called and they gave me a flaming uh, positive review of, oh my God, this really does work and I couldn't believe it. And Tony Escobar actually said, Bob, this goes against everything I've been taught for the past 40 years. But the truth is it worked for me and I can't deny what it's doing for my boy, Sean. He goes, it literally woke him up. So after reading the three books and having the empirical evidence that I needed, I said, okay, I'll do it. Well, you know my story, you saw my before and after. I busted through 200 pounds, went right to 195 in the first 11 days. I'm now like 185, 186, but I feel better seven months in than I did at any time, any time. I mean, I can't go back to my 20s and say I felt this good. There literally is something changing in my body changing in my mental mindset, my happiness, my clarity, my memory has come back. Um, I am positive. I mean, I can't sit still and I'm not watching the damn news. That's my story. So I did say to the group that I would share my cholesterol results when I did it. Well, I waited. I waited six months to have my test. I came on and shared them with you. My HDL went up like 30, 35 points. Went from like 60 to 95. My doctor said, not to worry, that's good. HDL is good cholesterol. That's outstanding. That is actually cardioprotective. I don't know what that means. So I got on the call and asked Jesse. I asked Susan Rothman. I asked uh, Ina, what does that mean? They said, that just means that it's actually healthy for your cardiovascular system to have a higher HDL number. It negates the LDL number. Well, again, as I mentioned, my family, notoriously high cholesterol. I've always been in the 200 plus club. Always have been there. So um, when you take that 95 number and add it to my LDL, that which it went down like five points, 10 points, but kind of pretty much stayed the same high. Bottom line, and I'm sitting at 235, 240 now. Well, I had my cholesterol down around that 200, 205 range. So what the heck happened? Well, of course, I'm eating a lot of red meat. Don't tell anybody. And by the way, the butter, I call it butter creep. It's like sneaking up on you. The Monte, the Monte Carigold butter that I go through on a daily basis is frightening. I think I add a good two tablespoons to my coffee every morning, maybe a little bit more than that, along with the coconut oil. I slather my steaks with it. Um, I go through a lot of butter. I'm eating ribeyes every night. Why? Because ribeyes are a fattier piece of meat. Absolutely love my ribeyes. Well, my doctor had a great suggestion. She said, uh, Bob, just for us to get to a baseline, I'd like to do a CT scan of your heart and arteries. It's called a calcium, uh, I think it's called a calcium, um, what is this damn thing called? CT heart coronary calcium scoring without contrast. That's the actual test. Anyway, had the test on Friday, so I've been doing this for seven months. Here's the email. Wow, I'm impressed. Your coronary calcium score is zero. I've never seen that in someone who is not a vegan and definitely not someone who is eating a lot of red meat, period. Strong work, I think we should repeat this maybe in three years to continue to monitor if your lipid levels are still elevated. What she was looking for was a baseline so that she could judge if the diet that I'm following is healthy for me or not. I said, I'm open to it, I'm open to change. If it wasn't healthy, I would be the first to say I'll change. So getting back to cholesterol and what we're saying in the group, Everybody who posts their cholesterol, including myself, that is my story. That is my results. It has no indication whatsoever on anything other than that this is based upon my uh, human, D sorry, my DNA, the way my body works, but how I also have been living the last 17 years. And I have to give a lot of credit to our intermittent nutritional system I've been doing this for 17 years. I've been doing two-day cleanses forever. I've been doing Isolene Pro Shakes incubated for five and eight, almost six years now. It'll be six years in August. So I've been doing a lot of the right things. What I did recognize is that without the ER shred, I had the Homer Simpson belly. I didn't have the complexion that I have today. I was dragging ass. My memory was gone. I was forgetful. I thought I had dementia. I thought that I had too many concussions, playing football, whatever the story is, is that I wasn't living my optimal life. Or at that time I thought I was, but I definitely was not. So ER shred comes into my life. What does this tell me? 
I've got a score of zero. Do you think I'm continuing with the ER shred? Damn straight I am. Are you kidding me? Do you think I'm gonna give up on my red steaks and butter after seven months and I got a score of zero and the doctor's like totally spinning out saying, I don't get this, but this is awesome. This is validation for Bob Sivright. This is not validation, hey April. <laughs> this is not validation for anyone else. This is validation for me. Now, what does it say to you guys? What this suggests is maybe what we're being told or what we have been convinced from a very early age or actually from the 70s that red meat is bad for you, that having fats is bad for you, and that you got to go plant-based and you got to go low fat. All of that propaganda, maybe that's not right. That's it. What if that's not correct? So what do we have here in ER Shred Nation? We've got 22,000, give or take, plus people that are enjoying this program. We have zillions of testimonials. Some people are willing to do lives. Thank you very much. Some people are willing to do the before and after pictures, which is a lot of, I mean, again, a lot of guts to put yourself out there. Thank you for being vulnerable because that's how people learn. It's how people come into the conversation. And for, your, for those that are posting your weight loss, your measurements, awesome. That's your result. And if you mentioned your cholesterol went down or your blood panel improved and your doctor's happy with it, that's okay too. Just say, this is what happened to me. Now, what does it mean to the new person? Hey, maybe I'm like Bob Sivright and I need to read three books. I wish I could get my time back. I'm laughing with Jesse. How do I get my time back that I read three books to convince me to do something that was good for me anyway? So my point being is this, it's incumbent upon you to take responsibility. Take responsibility for yourself. Take responsibility for your own health, for Christ's sakes. Excuse my language, but I truly, truly mean that. We have our own, we have our health, that's it. How many people do I know that are incredibly wealthy, have an incredible net worth, that have zero health, that have poor health, that are miserable, or they die too young, and the list is endless. How many people do I know in ER Shred that are living an optimal life, that are happier, that are seeing an improvement in all aspects? I mean, it's laughable. People who are married are saying, our marriage is better. People who are young, they're saying, oh my God, I've never felt this good. People who are gym rats are saying, I've never had such great performance before. People who are athletes, people who are all walks of life are benefiting from this. So ER Shred Nation, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for trusting the process, for having enough confidence to take the step forward because it's that first step that's the hardest. And for you guys that are just starting, just follow the protocol to the best of your ability. Get the best result that you can and then take note. No one's perfect, but be aware of the changes better sleep, less aches and pains. Maybe it's weight loss. Maybe it's loss of inches. Maybe your memory came back like me. All these things are big wins. And I would also ask you, please join. If you want to know how to pay this forward, and this is where I really, really feel like it's our my job. Thank God for Peter Greenlaw who introduced this to me 17 years ago. Had he not had the persistence, the patience for a knucklehead like me, who is the biggest skeptic in the world, I may not be here today. That's the God honest truth. My doctor said, you're not gonna see your daughter graduate high school. Well, that's 18. Well, I'm glad to say my daughter's 24 going on 25 and thriving and doing very, very well. And I'm thriving along with her. I want everybody in this group to thrive. Follow the system, do your best. And if you're like me and you feel this is divine inspi and divinely inspired, if you feel like you've been blessed by somebody else, do for someone else that someone did for you. Pay it forward. How do we do that? Go to ershred.biz, ershred.biz. Join me on Thursday nights. Join our group. Basically, it's called Shredders Unite Biz. Shredders Unite Biz, our other Facebook group. I'm going to get on there and I'm going to talk about how do you use my blood test, my blood panel, how do I use it and how can I compliantly share that with others so that I can make impact on my wealth. And this is the single best investment you will ever make in your lifetime, even if you don't share it because your health is most important. But number two is from a financial aspect, there's nothing, there's not a stock, there is not a real estate investment, there is not the lottery 
that is as good as this because the lottery is a one-time hit. It's a one and done. You do this right, you create a residual income that could last lifetimes. And that's the reality. You don't think? Look at the people who've come before us. Look at Peter Greenlaw. Look what he has done cumulatively. Look at the Escobars. Look what they have done. They put their nose to the grindstone and they worked their tail off for three, four, five years. But look at them today. They have more financial success than about anybody I know of. And that is the truth. Without the risk of a market downturn, without the risk of a mortgage crisis in 2008, without the risk of an internet bubble in 2001, without the risk of a 1987 stock market crash, those are real risks. And the bottom line is the economy does go through cycles and we will have another stock market crash and there will be another dire economic event that hits everybody. So if you're interested again, you wanna know how to get your health back, but you wanna know how to put yourself on a good path for financial freedom, join me at Shredders Unite Biz. Go to ershred.biz, reach out. We're all here to help and thank you guys. And at the end of the day, be compliant. We're not here to diagnose, treat, or prevent any disease. We're showing you some superfood ideas. We're showing you some amazing concepts in combination, synergistically. We refer to it as the ER Shred Protocol. It's four products, that's it. It is mind blowing and we hope that you are willing to share it with others. Have a great day. Join us tonight. Jesse's call should be blockbuster as always. Take care, bye.